What a mouse. Is it not there? The that's fine. It is recording though. <laughs> it does usually touch that. I don't know what happens. So yeah. Today it's been a different day. So. <laughs> All right. Good August. morning and welcome. We are Programs and Services Standing Committee of the Community Advisory Board that comes under the jurisdiction of Community Corrections Partnership. Let's set the table for board members and for those in the audience with some housekeeping items. First, those in the public, keep, please keep your participation on mute. For those on the phone, use star six to mute and unmute. We'll hear comments first from the board and then from the public by raising your hand. Our purpose is to advance justice reinvestment and protect community investments. And we have a few responsibilities and I'll kind of just like uh, go through them briefly, um, setting this table for uh, not only our constituents in the audience, but also for our members here present in the room. Some of our responsibilities are, one, we recommend program related policy both around both existing and new funding opportunities with a focus on evidence practices, both local, regional, national. We look for innovation and recommendations for implementation. Number two, we engage providers to educate CAB and other community members about their work, outcomes, needs, and recommendations. Number three, we promote a structure for and implementation of a comprehensive needs assessment for the county's reentry population, what's working and what's needed, and to inform future program rep representation, recommendations, and funding allocations. We also participate in program and services related to RFP development processes and panels by assignment from committee chair and or CAB overall. We are grateful for those who are members of this committee and so appreciate it for their time commitment. And now to our, on to our agenda and Monique, would you assist us please? Okay, so I'll do roll call to establish forum. Ozzy Carter. Here. Uh, Rena Moore. Here. And Latanya Thompson. Here. All board members are present. And then um, if you want to do announcements, uh, I mean, uh, introductions, Ozzy, if you'd like to do that. Sure. We'll go around the table and introduce each board member and their representation. Um, my name is Rena Moore. Um, I'm an ANIAC resident, and this is my first year in CAP. Good morning. This is Latanya Thompson. I am vice chair, and this is my first year on CAP. Good morning. I'm Ozzy Carter. This is my third year on CAP. And your chair for program and services. Okay, we can do, um, we'll do Crawford if you like. Crawford Carpenter, CAP member, third year on the cab board. Okay, and then we have staff. We have three ORJ staff members on. So um, I'm Monique Tate with the Office of Reentry and Justice. Then we have uh, Christina Jackson. Thanks, Monique. Hi, everyone. Again, my name is Christina Jackson. I'm a planner evaluator with the Office of Reentry and Justice. And we have Gariana Youngblood. Hello, my name is Gariana Youngblood and I am a graduate intern at the ORJ. Thank you all and welcome. Next, we'll open the floor for announcements. Any announcements? Not at this time. This is Latanya, I have no announcements. And this is Ozzy, no announcements from the floor. Are there any announcements from our audience? None will move to the second public comment on any issue under the jurisdiction of the Community Advisory Board and not on this agenda. Yes, I do have a public comment. Moving forward, as the, my third year here on CAB, and this is my final year, and as Chair of Programs and Services, I think this would be an ample opportunity to, for uh, our chair, our um, community. Oh, 
for my reg for my uh, for my um, members of program and services to have an opportunity to actually get their feet wet on exploring what it is opening and closing meetings and running the agenda. And I'm just putting it out there that from now on we'll be alternating, and whichever one decides between uh, Latanya and Rena for next month. And um, I have to say that that could probably look to be very daunting uh, initially, but I think because of my experiences, and I know it's very daunting, but because I'm leaving and because I, I know these are strong, strong, strong individuals here on this board, and you only lead by allowing others to take the reins. And so that's, this is a gift, you know, because this is a gift because I understand the dynamics and I understand what it really means to be here in the seat and to actually kind of comprehend what's going on. And you can only do it by getting here and just actually doing, and you'll see how easy it is. It takes all the, it demystifies the whole thing, you know, and just having that opportunity to get comfortable. And because our space is just kind of like almost really kind of like intimate here and having that opportunity. So that's my announcement. And we'll move on to our next item on the agenda, which is the approval of the minutes from our last meeting of April 20th, 2023. Attachment one, pages four through six. I'm looking for a motion and a second. I'm Rena Moore, I um, call for motion to approve the minutes. Latanya Thompson, I second the motion. And Monique, will you take a, a roll, please? Okay, and um, just let's see if anyone There's has no, any public uh, comment. Right, I'm sorry. Public, any, is there any public comment in reference to um, the approval of the minutes from our last meeting? Hearing none. Okay, I'll do a roll for the vote. Um, Ozzie Carter? Aye. Latanya Thompson? Aye. And Rena Moore? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you so much. So the next item on our agenda is to discuss the 2023 programs and services survey questions for our in custody participants. Ozzy, can I um, say something about this? Absolutely. Yeah. So I updated it based on the previous meeting. So if you could all check and just review it, if you haven't done so already, to let me know if I captured what was spoken accurately at the previous meeting or if there are additional changes that need to be made. Because everyone had an opportunity to go over it, is there any additional um, input, corrections, or comments? Um, this is what's on you now. Lena? So Monique, there are no other additions or corrections from the other uh, members of the committee. And I guess we are now ready for a vote. Okay, for a and let's see if anyone from the public 
uh, has any comments about it. Well, um, I have a quick question, if that's all right. Yes. Um, so uh, forgive me, I haven't been um, following the in-custody survey um, conversation um, from the beginning. I was trying to listen to the recording from last month and I didn't get through it. So forgive me if this question has already been addressed and uh, responded to. But um, I know, and, and if I'm getting ahead of myself, um, feel free to slow me down. Um, I'm thinking about um, the data that we'll be receiving and how we're going to um, analyze it based off the questions here. And I know there might have been some talk previously about um, how this survey will be implemented and how it will be distributed. And maybe that's in the next steps portion. I might be getting ahead of myself here. But if we were um, to distribute this survey, um, without um, combining it with another effort um, in the jails, and there might be another survey, and there might have been talks of combining these to streamline efforts. One thing I'm curious about if um, we aren't combining it is if there has been any discussion surrounding demographics and collecting information surrounding race, ethnicity, um, gender, um, if we want to glean any information on gender responsive needs or service gaps, or even um, age, um, thinking specifically about the, the Tay age group. Um, has there been any conversations surrounding collecting that sort of information on the in-custody survey? Well, thank you, Christina, for that uh, input and that, that question. Uh, actually, no, there has been no discussion around the collection of demographics. And I think okay. that, that um, probably needs to be uh, addressed. Um, I agree. And um, how that would look and how we would impl implement that without uh, overstepping our bounds as a um, committee with the survey. Um, we're open for a conversation. Uh, in answering some of your other uh, questions, we have already had conversations with the sheriff's department and other agencies that work inside the jail. Mm -hmm. We also understand the demographics of the three areas, the three uh, facilities that they can be dispersed at. So we yeah. have hopefully a team of individuals that will help us and assist us in implementing that process. Yes. Backtrack back to your uh, to the thing that's really glaring me is the demographics. And because um, that had been something uh, that I had really been put on task with in my academic career was finding uh, demographics. And even so, as a member of CAB, uh, looking to represent individuals uh, in various uh, ethnic dem demographics and also possibly um, other things like disabilities. And one of the things that I do understand is the possibilities of HIPAA and other things and how much information we can actually request from in custody individuals. So my first guess would be to uh, have a conversation or some more in-depth discussion as to what are what we can do and what we can't do. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's probably what needs to be on the table. And if anyone in the, can answer that, either hot here in, or in the room, I would be greatly appreciative of that because I just don't know how much we can put on a survey. Yeah. Uh, Chris, can you help us with that, Christina? And then are we asking, because we're not asking for their names though either. So we may be safe. I'm not sure though. You know, I have a question. What is the purpose of getting like their gender and all that um, in the survey just to know or like? Christina might can answer that question. Uh, Christina, did you hear the question from Marina? Sorry. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I heard it. Like, what is the purpose? Why? What, what are we going to do with that information if we're asking for it? You know, personal information. And first of all, folks might not want to share it, and that's fine. But I think the greater purpose of understanding who exactly is responding to the survey. I mean, the questions we're asking here are very, very critical questions, and understanding what the need is. Um, for the type of individual, I think is is the gap that of information that we need. So when the CAB makes recommendations on the types of funding and the types of programs that should be funded, we're doing it in an informed way. So say there is a need for specific gender responsive um, 
types of services. Th the survey could bring that information to light, or maybe there are culturally responsive um, programs that could identify certain needs or fears for individuals. But if we aren't identifying those subpopulations, we can't necessarily make those recommendations. Um, and, you know, I, I agree with your point, Rena. like we shouldn't ask or collect data just to collect data. Like, what is the strategy behind it? I think that's a great point. But that's sort of where I was coming from to uncover um, specific needs for specific subpopulations um, to ultimately make the most informed recommendations um, when that time comes for the cab. Um, the other thing I'll just put out there as well is it may be helpful to know. Um, where the individual is, I guess, it, what their status is when while in custody, if they are pre-trial or pre-sentenced or actually serving a sentence, because we know individuals um, who are there for a longer period of time may have different needs compared to individuals, or maybe not. I, I'm not definitely not an expert, but um, there may be a different types of responses for individuals who are um, there for a shorter period of time before they're released versus individuals who are in custody longer. So understanding if they are um, just awaiting trial or if they're actually serving a sentence in the jail might also be um, information that's helpful to know um, for the cab as well, just putting that out there. Um, to answer that question, a portion of that question, Christina, yeah. I think uh, as far as uh, what the status is, mm -hmm. that's generally, uh, uh, consistent with where they are housed. There are three different facilities that we are actually looking at. Okay. And I think that will be uh, the telltale signs of where they're housed. Okay. Um, and one of the other things I'd like to address is that uh, when we were developing this particular survey, we had mm -hmm. to be conscious of the uh, actual levels of um, articulation for individuals and we didn't want to make the survey too cumbersome or too overwhelming absolutely absolutely where they just uh I, i'm formally incarcerated so i know if i had a survey that came around to me and started asking me certain questions i might be hesitant especially because of the mentality you know yeah. i understand that mentality and you know uh and we probably get that type of mentality from individuals who are awaiting custody because they're on a point the only thing that's important to them is to get bail Okay, if we go into an area where individuals are, have already gone to trial and they're serving their time, they're more uh, reentry focused. Mm -hmm. Gotten to a point that they've gotten over that that hump of what's going to happen to me. They, they're into I'm serving my time. I, I I need to get this time over with so that I can move on with my life. So those things I think could be resolved there. But definitely we need to kind of adjust our survey to glean as much information as we can. Um, and how we do that and what that's gonna look like is uh, definitely uh, geared toward this uh, committee. And definitely thank you, uh, Christina, for your input to kind of like allow us to put on another set of glasses to revisit this so that we can definitely be successful in this venture because it's important, you know, and we definitely wanna set a pace that's just not gonna be for this year but hopefully uh, with the results and because you are directly in the response team of collecting that data and being able to read that data and your, and, and your expertise is that. So this is a team and we're gonna work as a team. And so whatever is needed to make this a win-win situation, we're here for the task. So let's Absolutely. get busy. <laughs> so anything that we need to look at this. So Monique, are you with us? I am. So we need, it looks like we need to add some additional things here. Yes. Mm -hmm. This survey. So um, you can tell me what you'd like to add. Um, it looks like the demographic, uh, maybe um, age, is it age range? You guys tell me what to add. And then of course I run it by Patrice and she'll say yes or modify or no. So tell me what demographic I, demographics I should add. I think the first thing, and this might be convoluting because we have so many demographics with um, gender uh, and how that's defined and what that's going to look like. Well, that's definitely going to have to be primary. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I really want to get into age. Okay. Let's talk about it. So this is Tanya. I guess um, if you're looking at like child care and other things, 
it would play a part based off the other questions we had on the form. So I don't know if we want to go back to the actual form and look at the questions, um, but I feel like for daycare that that may be applicable to see how many need daycare and what we're basing it off of. And you can also do an age range. This is Monique. Um, age range, Ozzy, because even even like there are people that are grandparents that are maybe responsible for children. Maybe it, you know they may be you know in custody, but maybe I'm just throwing that out there. So the age could be a range. And and Christina mentioned the transitional age youth pay population. They're 18 to 24, so you might want to, that might be important too, if you were looking at age. Okay, and do we also want to do an ethnic breakdown as well? Um, this is Monique. I mean, I think it's probably good to do an ethnic background because that is how a lot of the, the data is analyzed is that correct christina and i will ask Ariana too they both do a lot of data analysis so that might be important yeah that would be my recommendation and um when uh, Moni takes this to Patrice for feedback, I'm happy to support with that and make a as comprehensive a list of racial and ethnic um, identities to choose from. Um, you know, we could also, of course, put a decline to respond or, you know, other. So if individuals aren't comfortable sharing that information, they absolutely don't have to. But I think it's really um, important um, information to gather, especially as we move in a equity, uh, our, as our focus surrounds equity, making sure we have that data to um, support our recommendations in that, in that, uh, in that movement and that direction, I think is very um, important. Um, but we can, um, we can definitely um, work on something and propose it to the cab and, and see what you, how you feel that the question is framed and you know, like Ozzy, as you mentioned from your personal experience, is that something you would feel comfortable responding to the way it's worded? So we can definitely work on that. I'm happy to support with that effort Monique too. And, and as we present that to Patrice and then to the cab. Any other input? So we're adding gender, age range, and ethnic background proceedings. Gender, age range, and ethnic background. Those would be my recommendations. I have another question. Might we also include, uh, are there any uh, obvious or known disabilities? We might want to include that as well if we want to get a complete demographic. And I don't know what type of breakdown we could do as far as disability, whether uh, physical challenges, let's see if they have any disabilities and things that we're already asking. We have an other, but we haven't asked the question about. Uh, disabilities. Right. Right. And, and something else that came to mind too surrounds substance use and substance, um, some substance use disorders, excuse me, but you, that is sort of included in question too. Um, now, if we were to discuss disabilities, I, I think that's something that I would like a little bit more guidance on. Um, you know, potentially from um, Patrice or Denise, our research and evaluation manager here. But other things to consider might be, as you mentioned, physical, um, maybe mental or cognitive uh, disabilities as well. Um, but that one we might need to um, do a little bit more research on and how to best frame that. Being mindful, this is Ozzy, also being mindful of the verbiage that we use. Correct, uh, yes. We were informed that a third grade education, but then after we talked to one of the individuals who actually had hands-on experience, she said that we needed to make sure that we came down a little lower as far as um, 
making sure that we meet all of the criteria for individuals and their competency levels. Great point, thank you. Yep, you're totally right. So thus far, this is Ozzy. Thus far, we are going to um, amend our program and services uh, in custody survey questions, which is still in draft form. We're going to add initial. We're going to add crucial demographics that include gender. We're going to include an age range um, that's going to be broken out where uh, the individuals can just check off a box. We're also going to include um, ethnic ethnicity um, with, um, I guess, um, Christina will help us delve through breaking that down where it will be um, appropriate. Well, when we get to the disability portion, that's that other, uh, do you have your hand up, Christina? No, nope, just a thumbs up. <laughs> um, the disability portion is something that we're gonna really need to be careful with as we walk through that. Um, because I see on item number two, we do have mental health support. Uh, we have um, substance abuse and, and staying and remembering that people, sometimes we have to ask the question in really one way for them to really respond. So um, maybe the disability portion, if we could put in specifics that can make it more user-friendly where they can, you know, be more open, if that can be done. I see I have a comment. Yes. So this Monique, um, so we don't have to vote on this item. If you'd like to bring it back with the amended information, and then um, it can be reviewed and voted on next month. But you also have to determine today or soon when you want to get this distributed, excuse me, distributed. Thank you, Monique. Mm -hmm. So that's another question that we're gonna to have to ask. Um, and we're here, this is May. And our next meeting obviously is in June, coming back for a vote. Um, when do you feel that would be appropriate for us to do the survey to make sure that it gets out? Um, pig, let's go back. First of all, I think that we really need to tie up some loose ends to make sure that um, we have everyone in line that's gonna do the distribution. I think that might need to be a conversation that we have to have that everything is in place for that to be a go. Uh, waiting on us to redo this, I think we we could probably be ready in June once we get everything back. I think so. I think if we look at uh, at it carefully um, to make sure we dot our eyes and cross our t's, um, and then because what happens every month is we see something else and we keep adding on to it. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to get to a point where it's good enough, but maybe not perfect, but we can move forward. I agree. Um, I have another suggestion. This is Monique. And just like we've done with other items, we can it can be done offline. I can blind copy you all and you can provide feedback so that when it does come back in June, a lot of the work may have already been done. So you will be probably at a place where you can vote on it and proceed. Another, this is Ozzy, a question. Um, we'll have, Monique, will you have Patrice look at the uh, additions and then blind, uh, have meetings with us and then we can move forward in June? Yes. Is that what I'm hearing? Today? Yes. And then uh, Crawford has his hand up as well. Crawford, yes. Uh, uh, yes, I have a question and I think this ties right into Christina on the timeline, and I think someone else mentioned it, because we have to consider number one, okay, we're now in May, so then it has to be improve, approved in June. And knowing the way things work, that means you send it out in July. And then, uh, Christina, what's been your experience 
or uh, regarding the time frame that people get back. It'll be a month before they get back, correct? You know, that's a great question uh, because this is sort of a different this is a different kind of survey. I don't know if we've done an in-custody survey before. I'm not quite sure what the um, what that's going to look like um, in the jails because I will not, you know, I will not be part of the team that distributes it. I think we need to get a little bit more information from those stakeholders. Um, I can speak to the uh, the CBO provider survey, which I think is the next agenda item. But this survey in particular is a little bit more unique, and I think yes. we need to. Um, uh, to, to Ozzy's point, I think we need to uh, flesh out those details a little bit more about who all is going to be involved and what I think once we know that, then the timeline will fall into place. I think we're still deciding how this is actually going to look and who all is going to be a part of this. If we're going to, um, if we're going to, uh, yeah, I'll just those questions. I think there's, and I, you know, I could, again, just be missing some information, but from my understanding, I think we're still figuring out who exactly our partners are going to be specifically on this. And maybe depending upon that, we'll better understand what the timeline will be. Um, but I do think that we could get this finalized by June, the survey itself. All right, and the reason I'm uh, mentioning all of this is, you see, we have other functions that this kind of uh, overlaps into. For example, we're preparing for the ambassador program. And when we do the ambassador program, we like to refer to our AB 109 survey, just to highlight some of the key items. And if we're gonna be doing our ambassador program Possibly, we're, we're looking to get on the supervisors and county executives to get on their agendas in August slash September to see where the timelines are going to be rather crucial as we move forward if we tie this, you know, tie a bow around this thing the right way. So I just wanted to mention that. And may we also be cautious. Let's not go through the paralysis of analysis and then we don't get anything done. So I'll leave it at that, but looks like you're making pretty good progress too. If I could add on to that too, this is Monique. Um, so because this is a new survey, it I, I mean, I think that it definitely could be added to the ambassador meetings just to state that our programs and services came up with a great idea to provide a survey to in custody for people who are in custody just to provide to get a gauge on to provide better resources for them as they're being released so that we can provide services or better services to meet the need so it can still be addressed in the ambassadors it doesn't have to be finalized, but it definitely can be a key point to let our stakeholders know, the CBOs and managers of the agencies, what CAB's influence is. So I don't think it has to be finalized per se, um, but I do think it's a great idea that the committee members came up with wanting to um, survey individuals so that they can number one, know about the resources provided, because I think that's one of the main hurdles is that people simply just don't know, but to ensure that they know while they're in custody and what the hurdles are of coming out um, back into society and, you know, well, what's your greatest uh, challenge, et cetera, based on what's on the survey. So, you know, I understand what you're saying, Crawford, but I don't know if this has to be completed where we have the results per se, but we definitely can let the um, the stakeholders know what the committee has done. This is something new. So this is a definitely a great highlight for you all, particularly for your end of the year report and for future um, CAP members to continue with this because I think it's important information. Um, if I may, this is Crawford again. Um, uh, you make a good point. Uh, 
I would think, and, and maybe this is just, you know, just, you know, from my vantage point, we realize this is new, but wouldn't it be to me fantastic to have even some partial results from a new survey? And then we look next year to building on the foundation that you've set up this year. So it's almost as if we're using building blocks. Excellent questions. We put those out there. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But then we have something to build on. And then as we move into next year or next year's group, because uh, Ozzy and I won't be around, they can build on this and say, well, gee whiz, let's expand those questions. Let's expand the group, et cetera. But if we could report, because then our next step is, it would be great to be able to show to particularly our supervisors that we've not only expanded, these are our initial questions. These, you know, these happen to be the various results or feedback. We're looking for bigger and better things in the coming year. Now, again, that may be a little aggressive, but uh, why not? <laughs> hey, Ozzy, hey, we haven't, uh, what has it been, uh, uh, weeping willows so far, so let's go for it. <laughs> Thank you, Crawford, and thank you, Monique and Christina, for the input. Um, I know Latanya and Rena, they're the ones that kind of shelf, put this to the forefront. And I, you know, um, so we've got to, like you said, Crawford, we have to continue. Uh, they've set the stage, and um, we're ready to uh, take it to the to the max. But we have to understand too that it's a building. And every, you know, you'll get some more ideas. It's just like anything else. Once it's, you send it to the printer, you're like, oh, I forgot. Oh, I could have done this, you know, but keep those, keep the notes and keep the thoughts. And definitely as we continue with our providers and our presentations, we'll get to hear some things like we've got some things coming down the pike. We'll get to hear different things. You might hear some innovative things. And then, you know, you guys will hear Take a note and then add that to it because, as Crawford said, you know, this it's not going to be perfect. But you know, I think that if we hadn't had Christina here and we would have went ahead and done our due diligence with the approval, we could have missed some very, very important items. The demographics, because hello, demographics are what makes the data rich, and we want to, we really want to get the feel of that from these individuals who don't can't speak to us. They, they're not going to come in here when, we, when we're sending something to them to get the information. And this will be very valuable. And we're setting new trends, you know, to get to the to the heart of the matter. That's really important to us. And that's our this is what we're charged with doing. So we have our uh, we have our agenda ahead of us as far as what we need to revisit. And we're not going to do any major uh, approvals right now for today. We're going to move on. Uh, but knowing that we still let the, you know, we're still, you know, crack going to hone, continue to hone this document until um, there might not be this year, but we're going to move forward on it. Is there any other input regarding this particular draft and any additions before we move on to uh, the next item, which is um, how we're going to distribute the in custody survey? And I'm going to have to go back in my notes. Um, and I can ask provide Monique. a little bit of feedback. Yeah, this is Monique Ozzy. I can provide a little bit of feedback. What I recall is that you all decided that you would like to, um, to distribute it among all three facilities, and it would be definitely pen and paper. So that is what I recall. Does that sound right to you all? This is Latanya, yes. Okay, thank you, Latanya. And then also, um, so now as far as distributing it, um, you know, we have to definitely work with the, those that are in charge of the facilities to determine how to best do that on a timeline, because we're at the mercy of 
the, those individuals that are helping us. And Patrice may be able to provide more um, context around that. I think I had a question on, I was talking internally to ORJ or Patrice, I don't remember, but we have to determine how to get all this stuff printed and who's going. So there's just a lot of logistics. Let me just say that as far as how we actually do it. And Patrice would have a better gauge on that. Um, she is not in the office the rest, the remaining of this week. Um, but I can talk to other people and then um, like I've done in the past online, I can blind copy you all and kind of give you a better update on how that actually looks. Okay, thank you, Monique. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm also kind of like in the dark of, of the distribution, although I've heard, I've said in meetings, I know uh, Jana, um, but I was here. Mm -hmm. But I also know that I got some information from Patrice that, um, that I kind of made an announcement at CCP that the sheriff, that ORJ is working with the sheriff and other agencies to kind of like orchestrate the delivery of these uh, surveys. So it's already in motion. And I guess we can table this item as far as the distribution and move on to um, the next item. And that's uh, number five to discuss the AB 109 CBO survey. Uh, the first thing I would like to say is I did receive, I don't know whether, uh, anyone else has received the email? I received an email earlier from, um, it wasn't Monique, it was uh, from Christina's office. Um, Denise. Having one, Denise, I'm yes. having one of the junior moments. <laughs> Denise Florida's us all an email. And well, prior to that, I had gotten um, an email that kind of, showed what the uh, survey looked like. And I was, uh, did you all receive that as well? Mm -hmm. yes. And I thought it was very, it, that was the first time I'd seen it in the three years that I've been here. And I really, uh, I liked the way the format and how it was set up. And then I also earlier today, I received uh, an email from Denise that actually included the letter to the ABO providers and colleagues with the link embedded. And it went to that, uh, that link and, um, I was, you know, it's a done deal for this this year. And uh, thank all those who've been a part of that. Uh, it's off our off our plate <laughs> for this year, and we're anxious about the uh, the results forthcoming because we've come out of COVID, and you know we should be doing the things that we're we've been charged to do. Um, so, is there any further discussion that we need to have, Christina? Do you have some input? that you might like to share with us? I see yeah. your hand up. Yeah, just one quick thing, um, just surrounding timeline. Ozzy, you're right, the survey went out this morning, which is awesome. Um, we worked internally to get an updated contact list, uh, which took a little time because you know, things are in flux in the county. So we got the updated contact list that went out this morning. And um, in the email, uh, we gave a deadline of Friday, June 2nd to complete the survey. Um, the, the plan is to send a reminder either on the first, hey, the survey's due tomorrow, um, but also to give a one week extension uh, because we know folks, you know, may not finish it by June 2nd. So our um, our timeline is the second, but we, we will probably give a reminder with around a one week extension of a hard, hard deadline. And from there, we'll begin the analysis of the data we receive. Wonderful. Then just a, 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 a piggyback off of that, I did make an appearance at CCP and made the announcement that our surveys were ready uh, because, and, and I also gave them the little kudos that because of their, uh, encouragement, we had a great turnout response from last year. So hopefully that will kind of light the fire specifically under the agencies because they were in the room. And those are the individuals that we really want to kind of try to motivate them to be responsive and in a timely manner. So that's moving forward. And I want to thank you, Christina and um, Denise. Yes. I have to thank Denise because Denise also was instrumental in helping us formulate some of the verbiage as we move forward. 
Are there any other discussions on the survey? We have a, a, a Friday, June 2nd timeline. And according to Christina, we also have a week uh, extension grace period. And um, we're moving forward and hopefully we'll have enough time prior to our, our um, meetings with our ambassador meetings and we'll have that information and it was just a wealth of information to kind of like really let them know that we're doing the business that we were charged to do for our communities. Ozzy, I have a comment if I may. Absolutely. So I just want to publicly say um, that yes, the survey, it looked great. Um, Christine and I were, I was helping her with some behind the scenes with as other people as, have as well. But I want to just say publicly, we did not include the link here today on the agenda. We just wanted to have you all discuss it, but you all received it behind the scenes because you had worked on it. But at some point, it will be ready for the public to see how it looks. Um, and I'm just saying that because I know Crawford hasn't seen it, the overall cap hasn't seen it. So at some point, you know, I know that you all will be ready to share what the survey looks like. Uh, because I believe this is the first time we've done it online the way we've done it with a link before. And I could be wrong though, but I thought it was a paper. Or P I, I'm not sure. But, you know, we didn't include it in the, the agenda today. We just included it as a discussion, but at some point, the overall cab would want to see how the format looks, how the questions asked, even though it's been discussed throughout the meetings. But I just wanted to throw that out that at some point, we'll we should be able to share it with the public, um, even though you don't have all the results, but you want to share how it looks. Well, thank you for that, Monique. Monique. So I'm, I'm hearing you say that we need to share that link. So could it be something that will be included in our CAB agenda maybe next month, the link and some discussions? And how, how does that look, Crawford? Uh, do you think that that's uh, what we should do, the next steps for the overall CAB so that it can be presented to everyone? Sounds like a plan to me. Let's awesome. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Well, another <laughs> item added to the general meeting. <laughs> yeah. And you know what, maybe the thing to do if Christina or Gariana, I'm not sure which one of you uh, is in the middle of this, probably more in Christina's uh, uh, breadbasket, um, just give us a few highlights. Uh, you know, I think you and Denise previously, when you went over our AB 109 surveys to CAB, uh, I thought your presentations were, were great. And by the way, most informative. And but maybe just give us some some dad blame highlight. You don't need to give us the hey. You don't need us to you know to give us the whole thing, but maybe five minutes, and then that's it. And then you know what you can say more to come. <laughs> so so whatever. Uh, but yes, we will. Yes, we can get you on that next agenda by all means. Thank you for that input, Crawford. Awesome. Can I, oh, I'm so sorry. No, go ahead, Christina. Just one um, one quick note I do want to add here. Um, I, I heard discussion surrounding the CAB ambassador program. Um, I'm not quite sure when, what the timeline around that is. And I know um, it would be great to align findings uh, with the other activities surrounding CAB. Um, I spoke with Denise this morning um, surrounding our timeline specifically for this survey that went out today. And realistically, um, we think that we could have the analysis completed by end of July for this. Um, the in-custody survey, that's a different story because, you know, that's going to be on pen and paper, not electronically. And so the coding of the responses will be a different type of effort um, than, than receiving our responses, you know, in a beautiful Excel sheet here on, from the CBO and partner and provider side. That's, it's, it's much easier. Um, so giving the, you know, the two weeks and then the one week extension and um, just acknowledging that our office right now is a bit short staffed and just realistically, we think that end of July, we will be able to package this up nice and pretty for the cap. Thank you, Christina. Any other comments? 
If not, we'll move on to item number six, finalizing our 2023 work plan, which is attachment three, page eight and nine. It will be a voting item. We want to take a look at the different line items. We've discussed these uh, previously and um, maybe we've had revisited them and had some additional um, things that might you might like to add on. Commit to more <laughs> involvement. So, Ozzy, if I could chime in, this is Monique. Um, so, you have plenty of time for on the agenda. So, it's eleven fifty-three. So, we have we're doing really well on time. But you might just want to go by like line by line, like each section for each initiative. And then, um, and if I'm correct, I don't think you all have voted on your, um, I went back to check. It seemed like this is still um, tentative. I think because you ran out of time probably last month. Um, but yeah, so if you want to go, because it looks like we've already um, stated the persons responsible for each section. I updated that, but I, I think I, simply think it's just you didn't you got you all haven't voted on it to finalize it and it definitely can be changed each month it doesn't even though it's a final final draft and you vote on it it could be updated at any time during the year as you stated okay very good thank you Monique mm -hmm. so as we begin the first initiative is advocacy and support of cab policy platform and some of our subtasks and benchmarks are to undertake and brainstorm priority projects and advocacy. So, so such things as expanding housing resources within the county for reentry beyond AB 109, where we are supporting best practice program models, governance structures, and we're making recommendations. We are also expanding restorative justice within the county. We're supporting best practice program models, governance structures, and with that, we make recommendations. We also collaborate with other external boards, committees, or work groups, example, would be the Measure X uh, CAB. So the responsibilities and the timeline is ongoing. We've all made commitments and the individuals that are responsible. I myself am responsible for implicit bias and Measure X CAB. Latanya, CBO supports for participants with disabilities. Let me back up. CBO. Latanya, that's your area. You're supporting community based organizations, specifically participants with disabilities. Okay, and and restorative justice. And I'm, I'm, all is that all of us are I'm doing all, restorative justice. I think that's all of us. And Rena, your your primary for for housing, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's go down to the implicit bias training for CAB board members and CBOs that are receiving AB one hundred nine funding. That's one of the things that we're still. Um, in the process of um, moving forward on. Um, and I think I might will be possibly taking uh, the lead on that as it was stated in our last um, general cab meeting that the next steps would possibly be for me to uh, make a presentation to the AB 109 providers. And uh, that meeting has been canceled for this month. The next is moved to July. So um, I don't know whether I'm going to be on that agenda, but that's forthcoming to kind of like um, give them a report out on the work that we've been doing um, uh, as a, a, a board looking to uh, address implicit biases and um, how that will look not only for the board, but also for our community-based organizations as we've decided or we've kind of the conclusion that it's very, very crucial, you know, specifically for things that have, you know, 
have been coming out in the media regarding different uh, individuals that protect us, our police, fine men, men in blue, women in blue. Um, so I'm not going to drop the ball because uh, at some point we all have to become accountable and we have to say yay or nay. And um, if we're going to all work for a community that's already marginalized, um, we have to be sure that individuals are aware and moving forward to uh, do things uh, proactively. We're not asking them to come and sign a confession, but we're asking them to be proactive because we're all human beings. And, you know, we all don't say what's on our mind. So we have to be conscious of that. <clears throat> now, the ADA compliance is for CBOs receiving AB 109 uh, funding. Wheelchair accessibility of serving individuals daily as well as recovery homes with ADA compliances for those needing special accommodations. Um, now, this is tricky because I think one of the, our meetings uh, that we had, I think Patrice kind of like, um, oh, it wasn't Patrice, but it was um, one of our other community members, Jill Ray. And she talked about how we couldn't go in with the tape measure, measuring doors and stalls to make sure wheelchairs could go in those stalls. I mean, that would have been a great price incentive for some people who are going out to different restaurants and doing that. There, they were, there were people doing that, getting money, going around to ADA in his restaurants and things of that nature. Um, but what I really think for us as a committee, as we move forward on some of our other things, uh, in order to kind of like let that resonate within the organizations that we visit, we can ask certain questions. And I know we've done some questions, uh, how the questions that we'll ask our CBOs and some I've been privy and some of those things are embedded within the questions that we're going to ask yeah. on a whole. Um, what that's gonna look like, I think that's still something that we have to keep on here because it keeps not only us mindful, but to come behind us to be mindful that this is ongoing and never ends. As long as we're we're dealing with humanity, right. you know, this is always going to be a stigma. It's always going to be something that we have to deal with, and we have to we're charged with that. We we know that if not from our life experiences, but from the work that we do within our communities, there are things that we know exist. We have to be, you know, we have to shine that light. Spotlight. Someone told me it was a spotlight. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to move on to presentation from all CBOs receiving funding and make presentations before the full cab. And that's something that is definitely ongoing. So next, we conduct survey of program services needs and present findings, government and CBOs. So this is what we talked about today. And it consists of program and services qualitative survey, which means we go and crunch numbers. You know, if it was quantitative, which is, you know, we ask people and we talk and we have these discussions. And I just want to kind of throw out, I had more success. I kind of mentioned earlier, um, I had more success talking to people because there was a lot of data that wasn't included. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to do focus groups with incarcerated people to really get to the meat and crust of what was really going on inside of prison or what's really going on in your life because there's no numbers. There's no numbers because for some reason it's hidden. You know, they're, they're out there, but you have to know where to go and find the numbers. So I think it's really important that we do keep our uh, CBOs and our agencies on task and um, as best that we can. We also, not only we're developing the survey, and it's ongoing, um, we will disseminate to AB 109 funded agency and government departments who work with reentry populations will analyze it. And that's what uh, Denise and uh, Christina actually do for us. They analyze it and they gather all those little components and they kind of like give us a readout to know what, what they're really saying. Um, and we then present CAB with the findings and recommendations as related to budget, funds allocation, program services and challenges and so forth. And, you know, this is something that we do as program and services, but also CAB in, in conjunction with ORJ, who really helps us put everything together. You know, we're just the community advisory board that comes in with all the information, all we have the want list. And then we have individuals and agencies that kind of like can really uh, facilitate and provide the things that we really need. But you know what, we're, we're kind of like, we have to really be there 
we're like boots on the ground. We're from the trenches. You know, we're the people here that work, people here that have the life experiences, and we're the voice for those that can't be the voice. So we've got big shoes to fill. So we promote a comprehensive need assessment, program and services, qualitative data collection, conduct qualitative interviews with providers as needed, post survey findings, analyze, present CAB with findings, recommendations as related to budget, funds, allocation, program success and challenges. We look at local and regional needs, assessment to reentry populations, programs, survey local CB CABs, uh, San Francisco, Alameda, provide findings to policy and budget subcommittee, and develop a script and set up appointments to visit CBOs and present a report out to the committee. So, as a timeline of, of uh, August, and we already know from Christina that we the surveys and everything should be completed by the end of July. So we'll meeting our timeline, all of the things that are within our um, work plan, and over on. Um, The individuals who have taken on um, certain responsibilities, Rena, um, local survey of cabs, San Francisco and Alameda, and uh, we've all agreed to go to CBO sites to visit. I'm I'm charged with Rubicon and HR 360 entry for success. I think this is. Reentry for success. Yeah. And uh, Latanya, you with Center Force, Center Force, and D A L A. What is that acronym for? Monique. Bay, Bay Area Legal. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I know it's a lot of acronyms, and I was taking notes as you guys were talking, so I'm sorry then chime in as fast as I should have, but yeah, Bay Area Legal Aid is B-A-L-A. -A. Arena of Men and Women of Purpose, mm -hmm. and is that Lau family? Yes. Okay, so we have our everything. Is there any questions about this work plan? Any additions, any comments, anything that I missed, anything that we need to discuss in the room? In the audience, well, I guess it's time for a vote and a point approval of this work plan. We've got to May. This is May, and we're <laughs> getting to finally approve our work plan. Monique. Um. And I'm guessing there aren't any comments from the public. <laughs> Nobody stated anything. So I'll go ahead and do a roll call for the um, to vote on your agenda. So um, Ozzie Carter. Aye. Latonya Thompson. Aye. And Rena Moore. Aye. Motion carries. So your, uh, your um, work plan has been approved. Fantastic. So here we are, our next steps. I think the first thing that we would probably want to make sure that we get back to is um, finalizing our in-custody survey question. I think we also need to um, revisit our questions for the CBOs and get a timeline as far as uh, connecting and making those visits. Hopefully, um, when we come back next month, we'll have some, I'm, I'm, a, I'm hopeful in making some appointments and being able to come back 
can't make the appointments until we finalize the questions. the questions. So that has to be the top of the list, finalizing the questions. Yes. Finalizing the questions and then making initial contact with who the individuals are that we need to be making the appointments with at the different agencies that we um, would um, visit. So Monique, did you, this is Ozzy, did you hear that? Yes, I do. I have um, finalizing the in-custody survey as the next step and then revisit the questions for the CBOs and also discuss uh, the visits, uh, I guess, making appointments to visit, uh, site visits, I'll call them. We discuss site visits. Mm -hmm. So I have those two items as next steps. And also, um, presentations that we would like to see before uh, um, our committee organization, CBOs that we might like to have come and make a presentation. We're going to discuss that next. This is Latanya. You're going to discuss those that we want to make the presentation next month. Right. Okay. Maybe we can get a general, you like, can be thinking about in general what organization um, that we might consider. And um, one of the things that I really liked about our last uh, full body that we had, um, the homecoming that organization was presented and they're from Alameda. So what it doesn't have to be from our county. Uh, it can be from other counties because I know there's a lot of uh, innovative things that are being done outside of Contra Costa County. And we really want to start doing some things that are innovative and creative and getting some some fresh ideas. And, and I know you, Rena, and you, look, Tanya, you're out in the community. So you're seeing and you're interacting with various organizations, excuse me, that could be something that we need to to, to visit. Um, Ozzy, may I speak on this, Monique? Um, so yeah, just keep in mind that some of those uh, pre presentations can be done at the full tab meeting. So the one you just mentioned, I believe that she may be speaking to the full cab. Um, that doesn't mean she can't come to your subcommittee, but the cab will be first. So cab is June 8th. And I believe we're uh, Crawford is working behind the scenes to ensure that she does a presentation at that meeting. And I guess if there's additional information, she could certainly present at the uh, programs and services if she's available. Um, but I just want to mention that some presentations can be for the full CAB meeting, and then some are more appropriate to have at the subcommittee level. So, and you all can discuss which ones you think, and then at your agenda planning meeting, where the chairs meet with Crawford, then you all can come to a consensus of which one should be presented to which meetings. Okay, thank you for that, Monique. You're welcome. And Crawford has his hand up. Yes, Crawford. Uh, Ozzy, just to share with you this morning, I did talk to Rhonda and she will have either she or one of her team members will make the presentation on June the 8th. They will have their PowerPoint or presentation notes to Monique by June the 1st. So that's already been taken care of. Fantastic, thank you Robert, for that. Great, I'm really excited about um, that presentation. Anything else for our next step? Oh, our next step, who's going to lead the next uh, program and services meeting? I'll be here. Monique will be here. <laughs> Want to flip a coin? I'll do it. Okay. Great. <laughs> Yay. LaTanya will be officiating our next program and services uh, subcommittee meeting. Yes, sir. Awesome. <laughs> I will be here taking notes. Are there anything, any other items that we need to add for next steps? If not, it is 12-12. This meeting is officially adjourned.
Thank you. Good job, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Christina, thank you so much for your input. Crawford, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. But thank you for being with us. Bye. Bye. So good.